Sometimes when I'm working on an audio project where I have one audio source that I want to listen to as I work on it with a speaker and amplifier, while at the same time being able to record it, maybe on a laptop lying in or a handheld recorder like this Zoom H1, a simple Y splitter cable to take one audio source and send it to two places may work. But sometimes having a buffered circuit generating dedicated audio outputs with their own level adjusting capability may work better. So I made this stereo one input to three output audio sharing PCB with today's sponsor, PCBWay. This design uses two quad op amp packages has 3.5 millimeter audio input and output jacks, so one audio source can be plugged in, the left and right channels can have their levels adjusted, and the three separate buffered outputs can have their left and right channels adjusted as well. The intention with that is not to be able to have a complete adjustment range all the way down to zero and all the way up to some sort of preamp level gain. It's more to balance things out. The idea is just to have a replicator so you have a signal in and you want to duplicate it and send it in multiple different paths, but if you happen to need a little more gain on one channel, left or right, or if you do need to boost or attenuate overall for one certain audio destination, that can be all tweaked with those trim pots. So the high level schematic shows we have a stereo audio input jack, and then we have a duplicate op amp circuit for the left and for the right, where we take the one signal and buffer it and send it into three output jacks. I have it set up to run at five volts, and the op amps are biased up so that the signal can swing between five volts and ground. Since the left and right schematics are identical, we'll just look at the left. So we get rid of any DC offset for the audio signal coming in. And the first thing we do is buffer it, having a level adjustment where the gain can be up to around five times, or it can be attenuated if the pot is set for zero resistance. We have 300 ohms divided by 2K. That's a gain of 0.15. So we can attenuate or amplify globally, and then we can still tweak the gain on these other buffer output op amps. Over here, I put the pot on the input resistor instead of the feedback. So here the gain can be 3.3K divided by 11K. So that attenuates with a gain of 0.3. Or if the pot is at its minimum resistance, so we just have the 1K resistor on the input, the gain can be 3.3. I can't remember why I did these two different gain adjustment pot setups, one being in the feedback path and one being on the input path. Then I have these 820 pico capacitors in the feedback path of all of these op amps. And that's just there so that we can filter any excessive frequencies out of the audio range, just as a best practice for keeping an op amp under control. So 820 pico and 3.3K, that low pass cutoff is well above the audio range, but if we get some weird high frequency stuff in there, this can help filter that. And on this other one, the resistance will be between 300 ohms and 10.3K. So down at 300 ohms, that's starting to become a high frequency low pass, but if the feedback resistance is at its maximum value, we're starting to low pass filter dipping down into the audio range. So if I'm using this really to try and have unity gain just to redistribute the signal without really doing much tweaking, let's say we have a gain of one. So the pot is set to give an overall 2K here and we have a 2K in. Then we're filtering just under 100 kilohertz. So we're not trying to have an accurate filter at a certain frequency really. We just want an option for taming high frequencies. So this output signal from the first buffer stage is going to be biased up above ground. So we're just removing that bias again and re-biasing on each op amp. And again, removing the DC offset for the final outputs to send the audio wherever it needs to go. 
I chose a TLC274 op amp, mostly empirically chosen because I had these on hand, and it gave me a clean sine wave from my test input signal. And this looks similar in spec to the kind of op amps I normally use, so this is okay with a 5 volt single supply circuit. The output can get down close to ground when that's our negative rail, although we can't get all the way rail to rail up to 5 volts out. For example, running at 5 volts in this datasheet chart, the output low voltage at room temperature we can get down close to ground within 50 millivolts. And if we want to send a high out, we might get 3.2, 3.8 volts instead of being able to get toward 5. So our signal has to be biased to work within that range. Often I use an LM358, or the quad would be an LM324, but for audio purposes like this, where I want the signal to be as clean as I can get it with a general purpose sort of op amp, this class B has output crossover distortion, as noted in this application design guide, which outlines the op amp design structure and why we get distortion. And the distortion can be dealt with by putting a resistor on the output. They do some testing here to show this so that you don't get distortion, but then you're drawing more current and it's just not ideal. It's more of a hack. So here's an example. You have an input sine wave. If you don't do anything special with an LM358 type op amp, you'll get this crossover distortion in your signal. If you do the resistor output hack, you can clean up the signal again, or you can just use an op amp that is better for audio. I've seen this detailed in other blogs, and there's a video I saw. I'll link to that in the description. I tested the circuit with a sine wave around 20 kilohertz and just made sure that I can adjust the gain with the input op amp as well as the individual output channel op amp to make sure I can amplify or attenuate and not seem to have a distorted signal. Then reducing the frequency I went down to 1 or 200 hertz and still made sure it looked okay. Then I took this previous I2S DAC project with an MP3 on an SD card, and I sent that audio into the board using one output to play the audio on this amplifier on the workbench, and taking another channel and putting it into this Zoom H1 recorder so I could record the audio that I'm experimenting with and easily get that into a video without having to mess around putting a microphone up against the speaker on that amplifier and picking up other environmental sounds and all of that. And it seems like the circuit is working just fine. For my purposes on the workbench, working with audio circuits and wanting to be able to split the signal so I can record it as well as hearing it live, and even take a third copy of the signal and send it into yet another circuit, this will be a useful utility to have around the workbench.